Hi, if you're new here, my name is Eric. I deliver keynotes and workshops for modern leaders. Over the weekend, I was thinking a little bit about accountability. We know that it's a tool that when applied correctly can really help us to accelerate behavior change and improve performance, whether that's for individuals or for teams. And what I realized is that there are different types of accountability and that when we can cascade them correctly, it has a tremendous impact on the effectiveness of the changes that we are trying to make or the performance that we're trying to improve. So I wanted to create a bit of a model or a framework for myself. And I thought I'd quickly share with you because I, there's some value in understanding accountability through this lens. Uh, so let me quickly run you through what it looks like. So essentially there are three different types of accountability. There is accountability to others. There's accountability to yourself and there is accountability to measurement. Now, of course, self accountability is sort of the one that we speak about all the time. Uh, the one that gets the most attention uh, around the idea of extreme ownership. And in the ideal world, you wouldn't need any accountability outside of yourself, but in reality, uh, we do need some support, some accountability from other people or other instruments. So what I've tended to notice when I reflect on my own journey, whether that's working with teams and leaders or just changes that I've had for myself, is that most of the time, the, the ones that have been really successful, the changes that have been really successful, started with me making the decision, right? So there's always ownership of making the decision that something has to change. So the catalyst is always in the self-accountability realm. But then the best way to actually kickstart that change is to have accountability to others. And the reason for that is we feel a sense of uh, responsibility towards others. That if we don't live up to their expectations, then we feel bad about ourselves. We don't want to let people down. In some ways, it's driven a bit by shame and guilt, which might not be the best way of thinking about it. But the reality is that when we are beholden to others, we feel like we want to live up to the expectation they have of us. Uh, I remember many, many years ago, about 2011 or so, uh, if you asked me what kind of a person am I, I would have told you I'm a late sleeper. Like I'm not a morning person, that's for sure. But in that time, a friend said to me, you know, let's start waking up at about 5 a.m. Let's go to the gym. And for a very long time, I battled waking up at 5 a.m. because my perception was that I'm not a morning person. And so him waiting in the morning for me to, to get ready and let's go to the gym uh, was one of the biggest reasons why I was able to do it. And over time, uh, it became natural to me. It became second nature to me. But it was because of his expectation that I was going to be there and that I didn't want him down that I was able to initially create the momentum that I needed. What then happens is over time, I think your personality and your identity starts shifting. And then your self-accountability becomes great for maintaining the new behavior. And why I say that is because I went, in my case, from not a morning person to a morning person. And what then happens is once that shift occurs, when you break the pattern, it actually goes against who you are because you are no longer someone who did what you were doing before. You are now this new kind of a person. And so your identity in a way is then what maintains this new behavior or this improved performance. So self-accountability then is quite easy to keep that pattern going. And then once you decide, well, I now want to really improve this, then accountability to measurement becomes uh, an incredible tool to use. And this is where we use fitness trackers, uh, where we use coaches, all those kind of things. So to quickly show you how I've recently used it is that I decided that I wanted to play squash. My friend and I decided together we want to play squash. So immediately, so there was the decision. Immediately after that, we were accountable to each other that we were playing early morning squash. So you had to be up and in time for the session. Over time, what happened is I've become someone who plays squash. I really enjoy it. I, in fact, I want to get better at it. And so now that I'm a squash player, I have decided to invest in like fitness trackers, I've invested in a coach and I actively am trying to get better. So there's accountability to someone else, which is uh, my playing partner, but also the coach. There's accountability to myself that this is the kind of person that I want to be. And there's accountability to measurement that says, I want to get better and how do I track this? Um, and part of that is obviously also playing against other people. 
that's also measurement. So I thought I'd just share this um, very brief framework with you. I, I found it quite helpful. I think you can use this to troubleshoot uh, some of your own accountability. You know, where do you need some more accountability? What might be missing? And how can you use the three types of accountability to make sure that behavior change happens more naturally or more effectively for you? Or how can you improve performance using it? So there you go.